Hello, welcome back. Uh, this video is going to be another on measures of location. In this case, we're going to focus our discussion on percentiles and quartiles. And uh, as sort of a special case, this idea of a median is also going to fit into this discussion a little bit. So what, what are these? Well, these, these are really measures uh, of the spread of the data uh, in the interval from the smallest value to the largest value. How are those observations sort of distributed uh, within that data set? So let, let me give you an example as to why this might be uh, of any value. I've put together a very simple data set just to illustrate a point. Let's, let's say, um, you know, when you get your, your exams back from your instructor, students always want to know the average, right? What is the average grade? What is the typical grade uh, of a student on this exam? Because they like to be able to compare themselves uh, against that average. If they perform better or worse or pretty close to the average, it gives them some sense of how they performed relative to others uh, in the class. So let's say we have, and I've this is a very... Uh, extreme example just to sort of illustrate a point. Let's say I have a class of uh, just only five students. So n equals five students in my class. I hand back exams and I have a lot of really unhappy students. One student uh, received two percent outright failure. Another one five percent, another five percent, a nine percent, uh, here's another one at 20. Oh, this is actually, sorry, this is going to be six. I'm going to have six students in my class. I'm going to have uh, n equals six because this student's going to have a grade of 24% and this student's a grade of 98%. Just killed the exam. Or maybe a really good cheater and got away with it. I don't know. <laughs> so let, let's say that this is my grade distribution. So let's say that this is this hopefully isn't you, but let's consider this student who received this grade of 24%. Probably not feeling very happy about this grade. 24% isn't a grade that anybody would want to receive. So uh, I'm not feeling good. So I put up my hand and I asked the instructor, uh, what was the average on this exam? Because, you know, for a lot of students, knowing how they performed relative to the class will give them some sense of comfort, maybe, if they performed as good as or better than their classmates. So what's the average? So we add up all of our observations and we divide it by the number of observations that we have. So 2 plus 5 plus 5 plus 9 plus 24 plus 98 divided by, I have six observations. Oh, look at that, 23.8 is my average. So let's just round that up and say, my average in this class, the average grade was actually 24. So now maybe the student feels a little bit better because having gotten a grade of 24 is not that great, but oh man, everybody did poorly. Right, the average is 24. So now the students may be thinking, oh, okay, well, everybody did poorly, so I'm not, you know, I'm not the bottom of the class. Now, what if the student had asked, asked a different question, and maybe the student had m more information available to them? Let's say that they, uh, the student asks the instructor, says, what percentile am I in? What this means when we consider percentile, it's that position in, in the data set. Notice how I've sorted this from smallest to largest. So if I want to know what percentile am I in, what that's really saying is what percentage of the observations are less than this one. So if this is the student who received 24, what percentile are they in? Well, that student is the fifth student. Notice they're in that row from lowest to highest. They're in position one, two, three, four, five out of six. So they're in the fifth position out of six students. So let's times that by 100 to give me a percentage. So let's see, I'll get my calculator here just so we know exactly. Five out of six 
times 100, so 83. Now how is the student feeling? Well, getting a grade of 24 sounds awful. I did miserable. The average is 24. Oh, okay, well I'm a little bit better now. I'm uh, At least I'm the average student. If they understand what percentile they're in, and they're in the 83rd percentile, well suddenly the student is feeling much better because what this means is, is that 83% of the class did as worse, if not worse, as he, he or she did. 83% of the data points in that data set are less than or equal to 24. So now this student having obtained a little bit more information doesn't feel as badly about their grade. So when we consider you know, a mean or an average, it's helpful in some sense. It helps give some ideas to you know, where the observations are spaced and spread within uh, that, that, that data set. But knowing more information, percentiles and quartiles, uh, and median will actually give us even more information about the nature of that data set and how the observations are spread. So let's, uh, let's get into this exercise now and uh, we'll calculate using this data set of share prices. So I have the share prices of 30 companies on the Dow Jones Industrial Average and here I want to calculate the 25th, 50th, and 75th quartile, and the 60th percentile. Now these are all very much the same concepts. When we talk about quartiles and percentiles, it's just that quartile, we're talking in quarters, and so we're talking in segments of 25%. So 25, 50, and 75% percentile is really anything else. So percentile, we can talk about the 10th percentile, the 30th percentile, the 83rd percentile, so any other value. All we're doing is looking at that data set from its smallest value to its largest value and if I want to know, well, what is the 60th percentile, then what I'm looking for is where is that value such that 60% of the observations are less than or equal to that value. If we're looking at quartiles, let's say I'm looking at the 75th quartile, I'm looking for what is that observation that corresponds to that point in the data set where 75% of the observations are less than or equal to that value. Okay, notice the 50th quartile or 50th percentile is that value where 50% are less than or equal to. If it's 50% less than or equal to, then it must also be 50% greater than or equal to. And this is the same as the median. Okay, that's where this sort of sneaks into this discussion. Okay, let's, uh, let's scroll down. I've, I've rewritten this data set uh, just to save some time. Here I have it sorted from smallest observation to largest observation. Now, there's a, a, a simple formula that we can use to identify uh, where these percentiles are. And let me just uh, make a note here so I don't forget. We're looking for the 25th, the 50th, the 75th uh, quartile, and the 60th percentile. And I'm just going to write this down so I don't forget. So the formula that we can use I'll just write it in the up in the corner here. I equals P over 100 times N, where I is just an index which identifies the position of an observation. So here, these are those position values here, 1 through to 30. So I is an index. P is the percentile of interest 
And this applies to quartiles as well. It's just that the 25th quartile is the same as the 25th percentile. So we can use the same formula. And n, of course, this is same as it's always been and always will be. This is our sample size. Okay. Now there's a, a, a little bit of a trick is that if, if i is an integer, integer, so it's a whole number, then the, the relevant value of interest for the percentile or quartile will be the average uh, of i, the ith observation and the i plus one observation. And I'll show you that because I think that uh, that'll happen uh, in our data set here. So you'll you'll see what I mean by that. Uh, if i is not an integer, so it's a decimal uh, value, uh, then we'll round up in order to find our relevant value. And again, I'll show you that as we go through the exercise. So let's start with the 25th percentile. Uh, let's see here. So our 25th percentile, I'll do this one. So the, in, the relevant index is going to be 25 over 100. Our sample size here is 30. So let me get my calculator. This is going to be 25 divided by 100 times 30. So this gives me a value of 7.5. So if this is seven, oops, this is 7.5. So this is not an integer. So that fits into this category here. So we need to round up. So this rounds up to eight. So what, what does this mean? Well, now what this is referring to is that my 25th percentile or my 25th quartile corresponds with my eighth observation in my sorted data set. So if I come down here, here's my eighth observation, and that corresponds to a value of 54. So there's my 25th percentile or quartile is 54. So what that means is 25% of my observations are less than or equal to $54 in this case, because we're talking about price. Now let's go to the uh, the 50th. So now this really is our, our median. So this is going to be i is 50 over 100 times 30. So 50 over 100, this is 0 0.5. 0 0.5 and 30 is 15. So now we're in this case here, i is an integer. So what we need to do is take the average of the value that corresponds to i and i plus 1. So let's go to the, <coughs> excuse me, here's my 15th observation. This is 77. i plus 1 would be my 16th observation, which is 80. And so my 50th quartile, my 50th percentile, is going to be right in the middle. So 77 plus 80 divided by 2. Let me get my calculator. Looks like I accidentally closed it. <coughs> so 77 plus 80 divided by 2, 78.5. So there's my, my 50th quartile, or my 50th percentile, also, in this case, this is my median, 78.5. So half of my observations are smaller than that, half of my observations are larger than that. Let's carry on. Let's now go to the 75th quartile. So i equals 75 over 100 times 30. So this is going to be Let's get my calculator. Otherwise, I'm sure I'll make a silly mistake if I don't use my calculator for every <laughs> every calculation. 0. 0.75 times 30. So this is going to be 22.5. And 
and so this falls into this category here. i is not an integer, so we're going to round that up to 23. And when I come to my data set, here's that 23rd observation, and that's a value of 113. So there is my 75th quartile, meaning 75% of my observations are less than or equal to $113. Now keep in mind that one minus, one minus this is also relevant. If 75% are less than or equal to 113, then it means that 25% are greater than, uh, greater than or equal to 113. Okay, so we can look at both sides of this and that's important to remember. Let's come back to our next problem. So now we're looking at the 60th percentile. So the formula is the same. Just because it's a percentile or a quartile, that doesn't change anything. So this is 60 over 100 times 30. And let's see, get this calculator out. Point six times 30, so now this is 18. So this falls into this category. I is an integer. So I go to my 18th observation, that's this one, which corresponds to 93. My 60th percentile is going to be between 18 and 19, between the I and the I plus one observation. So if that's the case, it's between 93 and 100. So I'm going to find the middle, 100 plus 93 divided by 2. And again, grab this calculator, 100 plus 93 divided by 2, 96.5. So here we have my 60th percentile right here at 96.5. So 60% of my observations are less than 96.5 and 40% of my observations would be greater than 96.5. Okay, so I think that answers uh, all of our questions here. We've done 25th, 50th, 75th, and 60th percentile. That looks a little bit messy. I hope the color coding uh, has helped you follow uh, everything that I've done. Uh, hopefully this makes sense now on how these percentiles and quartiles help give some idea of the spread uh, of the observations within your data set. Okay, thank you very much for watching.